gospel reading for today is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 21, verses 25 through 36. Hear these words. There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth distress among the nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world. The powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great authority. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life. And that day does not catch you unexpectedly like a trap. For it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all those things that will take place, and to stand before the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of Christ. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, our rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Advent begins with Jesus talking about the Apocalypse, the end of the world as we know it. Every year the Revised Common Lectionary begins Advent with an apocalyptic text like this one, whether it be Matthew, Mark, or today Luke. I know that for many of us mainliners, talk about the end of the world and the season before Christmas seems odd. We think of this time of year as a time of setting up Christmas trees, lights, Santa Claus, and shopping for Black Friday deals at the local Walmart. Part of the problem is that I think that we confuse the Christmas season with Advent. They're actually two separate seasons. We want to skip over the waiting and the longing for Christmas in order to arrive at the star of Jesus' birth. It's very similar to Easter and Good Friday. We don't want to think much about Jesus' death and crucifixion. We want to skip that part in order to get to Easter. This is reflected in the general attendance of Easter compared to Good Friday. Obviously, there's more people that attend Easter than they do a Good Friday service. Apocalypse in Greek means to uncover or to disclose or a revelation of great knowledge. Advent in Latin means expected waiting and preparation. During Advent, we are preparing for and awaiting the birth of Christ and the second coming of Christ, where the world will be transformed into the kingdom of God. Well-noted author, scholar, and Episcopal priest Fleming Redlands says that Advent begins in the dark, both literally and spiritually. The days get shorter when we await the light of Christ. 
It was interesting for me to hear recently after a politician who was wanting to propose a bill to do away with the time change that occurs this time of year, I would have thought that a member of Congress would have had more important things to do. It seems like it's another example of not wanting to deal with the darkness that we encounter this time of year as we await the birth of Christ. It is an in-between time of waiting expectantly for the hope that is to come. Waiting is difficult. I'm sure we've all had the experience of waiting in a long line, anxious to get our items purchased so that we could get in the car and get back home. Have any of you here had that experience of waiting in a long line of people? If you've been to the self-checkout at Walmart, you know what I mean. It always seems like there is a computer malfunction of some sort, whether it be the operator or the scan system itself. It never fails to hold up the line. We don't like waiting. It drains our patience. In our scripture text for this morning, Jesus is reflecting on the eventual destruction of Jerusalem and the Jewish temple, which will happen in the year 70 during the Jewish-Roman War. The zealots who were Jewish freedom fighters who were fighting for their independence from the occupation of the Roman Empire initially gained control of Jerusalem. However, the Roman army would eventually <coughs> invade the city, burning Jerusalem to the ground and destroying the Jewish temple. The Jewish people were left stateless after this until 1948 when the state of Israel was established. Today there is one piece of the Jewish temple still standing in Jerusalem. It's called the Wailing Wall, where Jews still go to this day to pray. The Jewish temple was the central place of worship for the Jewish people. It was believed that in this one place, this is where the presence of God was to be experienced. <coughs> there was no other place like it for the Jewish people, and now it's gone. All three Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, were written around this same time frame, the year 70 and after. In all of them, Jesus gives this apocalyptic speech describing what will inevitably happen to Jerusalem and the temple. The Jewish people and the followers of Jesus are in a time of darkness and despair. What they had known for so long has been taken from them. For them it was the end of the world as they had known it. I know that many of us can identify with the state of hopelessness that happens when our lives are shaken by unexpected tragedies that cause us to reevaluate everything that we have known because what we have, what we have known for so long is gone. <coughs> we don't like to talk about apocalypses until an apocalypse happens. This last year had a very apocalyptic feel to it, as I am sure it did for you. Churches had to deal with how they could do ministry without having any physical contact with their members. Churches had to learn and deal with doing church online. There was division the likes of which we'd never seen. Riots, and the list goes on. It was as if the whole world was falling to pieces. There were other moments within my lifetime that were similar to last year. I can remember September 11th. I was a senior in high school getting ready to graduate. It was also a time of shaking and disorientation. What always happens during these times of uncovering is that things are brought to light that were never known before. 
what has been uncovered or disclosed or revealed to you this last year. The great Danish poet Søren Kierkegaard says, there comes a midnight hour when all men must, must unmask. Jesus talks about signs. I've seen all kinds of signs while I've been driving around here in writing in Sioux City. One particular sign that I remember in Sioux City was located just beneath a steep hill. As I went over the hill, the sign read, Prepare to meet your God. <laughs> Street signs give us instruction and tell us what we are to do as we move from one place to another in our vehicles. This is what Jesus is doing with his disciples, letting him know that hard times are coming. But this is just the beginning of something new that God is bringing to life. Jesus is telling us and the disciples with his parable of the fig tree that the signs of the end are only the beginning of the new creation that God is bringing about in Jesus Christ. New creation always precedes disruption and chaos in the Bible. You can see this in the very beginning of Genesis where God creates order out of the chaos. I don't think this is God that causes the disruption. Perhaps this is the only way that God can make God's self known to us humans. I love the poem, and I, I didn't realize until I searched the words that it was written by Leonard Cohen, but I love the poem Anthem by Leonard Cohen that says, Ring the bells that still can ring. Forget about your perfect offering. There is a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. In the midst of hopelessness, Jesus is giving the disciples hope that just like the changing of the seasons, when the fig tree and all of the trees sprout leaves, you will know that the kingdom of God is near. God is about to bring about a new creation. God is about to bring hope out of hopelessness. As we begin this morning with the lighting of the hope candle, let us never forget that God is always bringing new life and hope out of trying and difficult 